All right, we are going to be going over a 1991 Bayou 300. This is a two-wheel drive model. And I'll show you a couple differences here. We're gonna try to go through this entire four-wheeler, kind of give you the rundown, rundown on the parts on it, where parts are, how to change oil, service, pull carb, um, just everything about it. So this has got the uh, disc brake set up here. It's hydraulic calipers. They um, run down from the handle up there. They run down and then split to each caliper and that's the front. So then we've got your hubs here. Uh, we pulled obviously these rims off. It's a 17 millimeter nut there. Front shocks, we got the upper and the lower left hand A-arm on this side. So if you're sitting on the four wheeler, left is um, your left side. So we've got your recoil pull starter here. We've got the uh, diff lock here, the unlock and lock. What that does, it runs a cable back to this rear differential, and then this cable is broken, but that locks both axles in. Otherwise, if you're in the unlock mode, it will, uh, just one side will be spinning. We've got drum brakes on the rear. We've got drum brakes on either side. So same thing, that cable splits, but this is mechanical. And uh, when we look at the other side, I'll show you that rear brake cable. We've got the CDI box under Neath this rear fender here and you can get to it without pulling the fenders. It's got uh, Looks like two connectors two three pin connection. One of them is a two pin connector The other one's a three pin connector. We've got your starter relay down here And that is uh, when you touch the starter button it connects these two uh, And sends power to the starter We've got your drive shaft here. This is what they call a prop shaft and um, this is all enclosed in this housing here as well as this boot. Pay attention to this boot. If it gets damaged or worn, you want to replace that. Uh, we've got a five-speed manual transmission, meaning you don't have to pull in the clutch to shift, but you do need to let off the gas and pull the shifter up. You've, it kind of says there exactly what it is. Uh, we've got neutral, reverse, and I'll show you that up on the handlebars controls. And then we've got one through five there. Recoil pull starter, like I already said, we've got your cylinder um, head right here. We've got your cylinder and then obviously your bottom end. Your stator magneto is gonna be on the left-hand side behind this cover here. And to check timing, I'll show you that in a separate video, but we've got your inspection cap here. And then you wanna pull these two eight millimeter bolts to check your timing on your top sprocket there. We've got your intake valves here, your exhaust valves here. And that is just gonna be two um, eight millimeter bolts to remove those valve inspection caps. We've got your front bumper here, obviously, underneath of your front fender, which we've pulled already, just so we can see a little bit better, is, um, is your this wire connection housing. This is just Velcroed together and then zip tied on the top and bottom. And it has got your light connections, uh, your switch connections, your ignition switch connections, all those connections are underneath this, um, this plastic housing here. Got your ignition coil, which we've already pulled the coil cap off and going down to your spark plug here, there's a coil right underneath the fuel tank and uh, obviously a fuel tank is pulled. We've got your exhaust manifold here, your head pipe that runs back to your exhaust muffler here. And to undo this, pull this exhaust muffler off, We've got two 12 millimeter bolts up here. And then behind this fender here, which this fender is broken big time, is a, uh, a clamp that's generally held with a, a either a 12 or a 14 millimeter bolt. And you'll have to loosen that clamp to pull that muffler off separate from your header. We've got your parking brake here. And what you do is you push down on your brake lever and you turn this uh, to the correct position. So right now the park brake is on, on the highest position. I don't know if it'll kick out. It's supposed to kick out when you uh, push down on the brake lever here. This uh, is spring loaded, this lever is, and it'll kick back. Here is your oil fill plug here for filling with oil, and it holds 1.7 liters. That's just about two quarts. And your sight glass is directly underneath here. You know, you make sure there's a line on top and bottom of this case. You wanna make sure that your oil is in between those lines when you're on level ground. You wanna make sure that your engine is warmed up for a couple minutes, shut down and sat for a minute or two. And your oil should be uh, right in the center of those lines. If it's too full or too empty, plan accordingly, but it's not good to run a four-wheeler too full of oil. We've got a vent on your crankcase um, that will blow that engine oil out. 
unless it blows the seals out first. We've got your oil filter down here and it takes two eight millimeter uh, bolts to pull this cover there and then you've got your oil filter underneath. You get your starter here. When you push your starter button up on the uh, left hand side of the handlebars, it engages the starter relay that I showed you in the back, sending power down to your starter. And I'll show you when we dig into this motor what that starter drive system looks like. Um, but that's about as deep as you can see right now. We've got a decompression lever here on the top of the cylinder head. And when it is um, difficult to start, sometimes hot, sometimes you got to pull start it uh, with, a, with the rope, you can hit this decompression lever. That pushes the valves down, pushes the valve down, allows your motor to spin over more freely. So you want to make sure that that is not held in either position or held in the up position. You want to make sure that it's down so that you're not... Um, constantly uh, low on compression. Uh, we've got your um, the rear drive assembly which we already talked about a little bit but we've got your differential here and you fill that oil here but you've got a, uh, a drain bolt down below there, generally a 10 millimeter drain bolt um, in between uh, a hole on this skid plate here which is going to be hard to show you on this video. To fill your rear differential, you pull this cap, you fill the oil up until it starts coming out, this exact same cap. When it does, you are full. Your regulator rectifier is on this side. What that does is your stator, what I talked about here, that's underneath this, sends power to your regulator rectifier. Your regulator rectifier determines how much power your engine and battery needs and um, will control that power with this box here. Very common if you've got um, a charging problem, um, I would always start with a regular rectifier. They're the cheapest of all parts to replace, but they are easy to test and, um, and a lot easy to replace. A lot easier than a stator would be underneath this cover here. And I'll show you how to replace that stator in a separate video. We've got up top here, I'll climb up here, and uh, air box is already out of this four-wheeler, but it sits here, held in by two 10 millimeter bolts on either side here with a boot that connects it up to the carburetor here. We've got your battery that sits back here. We've got a positive and a negative wire on those batteries. Here's the negative wire. Here is the positive. And again, that takes the power from the starter uh, switch down to the relay uh, when that starter button is hit. We've got a toolbox in the back here. And we've got a headlight that actually can be removed and used as a spotlight up top here. Now, our reverse lever that I told you we would talk about is uh, right here and what you do to put this four-wheeler in reverse is to turn this knob here and push down on the shift lever down here you must uh, turn this knob up on by the handlebars here to put it in reverse if you don't um, just slamming down on the gear shifter will not do the trick we've got your high and low beam lights here on your left hand switch here we've got your engine uh, shut off here we've got your choke assembly here Pulling your choke towards uh, the outside of the handlebars, so it'd be the left direction is going to choke your four-wheeler. To shut your choke off, you push it in towards your headlight. Your starter button is down below here, and you need your key on uh, right here, your ignition switch on to hit that start button. You also need your stop switch to be in the run position. Here is your uh, master cylinder here, and that is uh, controlled by this lever. Here, you wanna make sure that your fuel fluid is up onto this middle sight glass window. On this, you wanna use DOT brake fluid three uh, when filling this up. And um, throttle lever here, and um, that is controlled by a cable that runs down behind the headlight along the frame and to the carburetor. Now, right now I am pushing the throttle cable, or the throttle lever, and you see that it is um, engaging the butterfly on this carburetor. Now to remove the carburetor, you've got a 10 millimeter bolt or a 10 millimeter nut on top here and on this side that will um, need to be loosened up to, uh, um, well, this side, this side, and then I'll go to the other side, but the carburetor is here, here's your choke assembly. And I showed you up here uh, with this choke lever runs down, same way it kind of runs along the frame, is engaged, um, is, into this carburetor here. Now it's got a plastic cap on there. Generally it's a 12 millimeter, possibly a 14 millimeter plastic nut that runs into that carburetor. You can remove that to keep the cable with the four wheeler while you take off that uh, carburetor to clean it. We've got your fuel line 
Coming in here, your fuel tank sits here, obviously. It's gonna run down and go into that nipple there. That fuel line is obviously broke. A lot of times that happens when uh, four-wheeler sits around too long. We've got a clamp underneath here that um, can be put on either direction. This side, or this one is um, from the other side. You need a Phillips screwdriver to loosen this clamp. And then obviously your air box doesn't need to be removed, but it sometimes makes it easier to remove that air box. And you can pull that carburetor back um, to take it out of this boot. This boot is not very flexible, although it does seal up when you clamp it down. I'll go over on the other side then and show you that carb or that throttle cable. That throttle cable here, again, pulling the, uh, pushing on the throttle, the thumb throttle here, you see that it engages that carburetor. Um, this line running down here and going to the other side is your idle adjust. So you adjust that from the left hand side of your four wheeler. You turn it clockwise, you turn it up, and essentially what that's doing is pushing that butterfly open even more, letting it idle even higher. So you're gonna make sure your four-wheeler is good and warm before you do that, before you adjust that idle at all, and I would do small increments when you're doing it. So go ahead and pull this top 10 millimeter um, bolt here, and then, and then you take that cable and you just slide it out of that groove there. Now then what you do is take that cable, kind of wrap it around there and pull it out where that groove is. Now once you've got that uh, uh, choke cable on the other side removed, that um, plastic cap removed, then that carburetor is um, able to come out. You've got your bottom vent hose here that wants to run down beneath, uh, underneath of that motor. That is um, an overview of the Bayou 300 and one more thing we've got our drain bolt here and that is generally a 17 millimeter bolt uh, right in the middle of that skid plate so that is how you drain the oil obviously you want it warm before you drain it you don't need, it doesn't need to be hot but you want to turn that motor over several times to get that motor stirred up get the debris out of there that is an overview of the Bayou 300 Kawasaki